Hey everybody, today I'm really excited to announce the best digital stack that you can buy. Whether that be for freestyle with a DJI system, Walksnail, HD0, doesn't matter. This is the best performance, highest engineered stack on the market, and I'm going to prove it to you today. I've already made a video about our awesome Halo FC. It's the only FC that has dual Express LRS inputs for Gemini mode. And it makes making a digital build super easy and straightforward. You just plug in your VTX. There's no soldering on this that's required at all. I wonder what would happen if I connected this DJI 04 to this HD0 Halo. Turns out it's just fine. The Halo FC has a high power 9 volt back designed for powering VTXs like the Freestyle V2 from HD0 and the DJI 04. Unlike some other really high performance stacks, the Halo FC ensures you have plenty of IO for whatever you might want to do, like a GPS with a compass, extra UARTs, the ability to turn off the built in Express LRS and use some other system if you'd like to, um, LED pads on every corner so that you can easily put LEDs everywhere. The only thing that we don't have on this is we've removed the analog OSD chip and capability so that we have more space on the board for like high power backs for the LEDs and for your HD VTX and having the really unique dual antenna, uh, true diversity Express LRS supporting Gemini on the board. So I'll set that to the side and let's talk about the 70 amp 8S Halo ESC. So here's the kit, HD0, we'll open it up. Inside you've got a card that gives you all the instructions and how to wire it to various systems. And we have the Halo ESC and FC. Here's some highlights of this. This is a small form factor, four in one, 70 amp capable ESC that you can fit into every frame that you have. It's got a separate board for the low voltage microcontroller parts versus the high voltage, high amperage ESC parts. Also unique on this design are, is there are six MOSFETs per ESC. And that's versus three MOSFETs per ESC on many other designs. This gives us higher power capability. We also have really thick three ounce copper per layer to optimize for current and thermal efficiency and thermal transfer. We have this copper bar here on the ESC, which improves current delivery and heat dissipation. Doing all this has enabled us to be able to sustain 70 amps on each motor for over 30 seconds and 100 amps for three seconds per motor. Impressive. The design is such that we provide extremely clean power to the microcontrollers for the ESCs, which prevents things like brownouts and burnt motors and lockups which happen when you have things like a voltage spike from a hard crash. We've also applied significant amount of conformal coating, which you can see in the shine on this, to help prevent moisture and corrosion from impacting the performance. You can also order this ESC in both an AM32 and a BL Heli32 version. We are really impressed with how AM32 is progressing as an open source project, and I personally run the AM32 version on my setups. However, we do recognize that a lot of top racing pilots really prefer the way that BL Heli32 is working and flying. So that's why we've looked throughout the market and have found a way to purchase licensed BL Heli32 MCUs that are pre flashed and then they're put onto the board. So, no, we're not using a test version of BL Heli32 here. We're actually paying. paying for each of the BL Heli 32 MCUs pre-flashed, specifically designed for our Halo. Now let's talk about the development and the engineering and the testing that's gone into this. 
This is our third revision of this ESC, so we're not just putting out the first one that we came out with. And I've been testing versions of this for about six months, as have a lot of other top racing pilots. So here it is in one of my builds. And I'm putting some pretty spicy motors on this. This is a 2100 kV success motor, 2207. In the course of testing, we did find some issues that we didn't find in the lab. So during some field testing, I noticed that one of the motors would drop out. This could have been caused by uh, unclean power to the microcontrollers. And that's why we made more revisions and improvements to have extremely clean power going to the microcontroller controlling the ESC. We've also made sure that we've tested this ESC to the limits. That means installing exceptionally large motors and running 8S with no capacitor. We've done an incredible amount of lab testing on this Halo ESC. So here is a white paper that we have, and I'll go over a few of the details and link to it in the description. We've tested the Halo ESC with this large 18 inch propeller and these large 5330 motors. And we're going to test how much current we can pull from the motor in different conditions. So as you can see here, uh, we're ramping up the power and ramping the power down and doing that rapidly will cause a lot of failures to occur. We're also measuring the temperature here, as you can see. So I'll move this along and then you can see that we're pulling a lot of power. And then we get an alarm. And then here are the final results. So here's all four running, and we're gonna see our maximum coming in here at 294 amps for four motors. We've gone through a number of iterations, and here is prototype two blowing up. Pretty spectacular. Next up, we'll be poking the propellers with a stick while it's running to be able to stop it really quickly, causing All a right, spike. All right, here's the Halo AM32. This is really dangerous. Don't try it at home. Still flies fine after the poker test. Smooth sounding. This next test is just kind of for fun. It's going to be a launch control between a competitor and the Halo on the right. And we're just going to see who's going to get across the end of the field first. And here we go. And as you can see, the Halo ramps up faster and the competitor ramps up slower if you look at the audio waveform. And then in slow motion, we can see, yep, Halo beats. And that's because of the higher amps. So we, we really do stand behind our claims of 70 amps and 100 amp burst. And we do know where it can fail if you've pushed it too far. Not everyone can say this. And it is very impressive engineering. Whether you're freestyling and really pushing the limits in a bando and crashing all over the place, or you're racing and pushing really high KV motors really, really hard, our Halo stack is definitely the first choice that you should make when determining what to buy. With that, bye. So here's how I have it installed in my racing frame, the zigzag. I'm using the shorter standoffs here. And with that, it's more of a slam build. And what I've done is I've put low profile screws or low profile nuts on the bottom right there. And then I put the ESC down and then I put some of our steel nuts 
down to compress the ESC against the battery strap. And then on top of that, I put some of the included one millimeter thick washers. And then I put the ESC floating on top and the VTX floating on top. And there I have a nice stack that is evenly kind of spaced out and it, it performs extremely well. Here's another build that I did. This is another slammed build actually. So it's easier when you have a more normal stack height, but here I've got the ESC on the bottom, again with the smaller nuts. And then I made this TPU kind of a protector there in the uh, yellow color. And the reason for that is kind of space things out and to provide a way to protect the USB-C port from the ESC, just in case that you're worried about that and to space things out. So I'll include that TPU print in the description of the video. And then of course you just stack everything else on top of there as you see. In both of these cases, we recommend installing the flight controller and the ESC with the plugs facing downward. This is gonna provide the most low profile stack that you can build so that none of the plugs run into each other. Doing this, you will have to reorder the motors on the Betaflight motors tab as it will be opposite of how they're labeled. But that's a pretty quick procedure to do and you can build a nice, low profile, extremely high performance stack. Here's another pro tip for you. When you're working on a Betaflight configurator and working on the motors and have a, a battery plugged in, I don't recommend having the battery plugged in here and then try to fiddle around and like just hit things and short things out. What you want to do with this USB-C connector is before you plug in this battery, plug in the USB-C, disconnect the USB-C on the other end to the PC, power up with the main power, and then plug it, the other end of this USB cable into your computer. You shouldn't be putting something metallic that can short out on things while you have high voltage powered up. And if you're curious, here's a couple other recommended ways of mounting the stack to get the best results depending on how your build is set up. And here's how our Halo ESC compares to popular racing ESCs like the Foxier Slim 60 amp and the Rush Blade 60 amp. So here is the size comparison for you on the Foxier Slim 60 amp versus our Halo. Uh, as you can see, it's about the same size in the uh, length direction. I'll stack them on top of each other here and we can compare how it all lines up. So there they are stacked on top of each other. And what you can see is the Foxier is a little bit wider than ours. Uh, so if you could fit the Foxier Slim in your stack, you're going to be able to fit this in. We also have these nice castellated pads on the sides so that you can solder to the side instead of having to only solder on the top side on the Foxier Slim. Now here's how we compare it to the Rush Blade 60 amp. This is a more close comparison and here's how we compare to the Rush Blade 60 amp here. Uh, you can see this is a little bit more close form factor. The length is about the same uh, and the width is also similar right here. As you can see, they're very similar in width. So again, if you can fit this Rush 60 amp in to your stack, you're going to be able to fit this into the stack just fine too. I do want to point out an interesting thing here. On the inside of the Rush, they do have this separate MCU board for the low voltage, kind of like what we've got here on the Halo. One thing I did notice though is this stack only uses three MOSFETs per motor rather than us using six MOSFETs per motor. So ours is potentially gonna be more capable than one that only uses three per motor. I also wanna point out that the pinout for the connector going between the ESC and the FC matches the Betaflight standard. And what you'll find is if you already have a Halo flight controller, our ESC is gonna plug in with no repinning required. So here you go, there's the two of them, and you can see on top of the plug, we have the pinout labeled, and it is a match on each of these. So, so nice and easy installation. Just a little tidbit on the connector between the two components. 
We've actually gone out of our way to test several of the wires and connector options available for these JST plugs. And this is a higher quality, higher current cap cap capacity wire than you can normally find. So it's all about the small details. This is a truly high performance stack. Let's do a speed run of how to build for a common frame. This is the light switch V2. First thing we're going to do is put on some low profile M2 nuts. A few of these are included in the kit. Next, we're going to put the small gummies on the Halo ESC, not the tall ones. Then we'll place it on the stack with the plug facing down. Then we're going to take these one millimeter washers and put them on here to space off the ESC and the FC, just like that. Next, we'll take the Halo flight controller and put the tall gummies with the tall part facing down, and we'll put the plug facing down as we install it. Okay, so your USB-C port should be facing to the right and down. Next, we'll install our antennas for Express LRS because they're included with the flight controller and you don't need to solder anything on. But I'm going to show you how I route them. So first off, I put this one here and I route it and I kind of zip tie this to the top plate like that. And then the other one, the long one, I stick one of these antenna routing strain reliefs on the post here. And then I route the antenna down the arm like this. One last thing that I recommend doing is I like to put a little bit of electrical tape or Kapton tape on the tops of these UFL antenna heads just to make sure that nothing shorts out. Now we're up to the VTX. So let's put the tall gummies with the tall part facing upward. Or if you have some of the short gummies, I recommend using those instead. Just put the short ones on and then we're gonna put the antenna facing forward like this and slot it down. Put your nuts on top and then you're all done. So that's gonna be how you would do a typical install on a typical frame with a typical stack height.